I'm Richard Lowe Jones, and this is Thinking with Somebody Else's Head. A word of warning right at the beginning of our program today, our subject is a delicate one today. In a world where speech is often paralyzed, not by an Orwellian big brother poised to punish us for deviations from the acceptable, but by our own individual and collective decisions as to what's correct or not. Straying from the correct speak causes raised eyebrows and pursed lips at best and outright shunning at worst. It's a politically correct world in the West and the language has been sculpted and massaged and homogenized to remove any unwanted judgments or value statements in a total conviction that this is progress. Politically incorrect is simply not tolerated, a throwback to a time most considered downright evil. But there's a problem underneath all this. Unfortunately, not being able to say anything critical about anyone means real defects and problems don't get pointed out anymore. And all that walking on eggshells means we can't really develop. The problem appears particularly formidable when we want to talk about women's pathology. Big sisters watching today on Thinking with Somebody Else's Head. Well, it's great to be back. We haven't posted a program for a long time. Although our vast back catalog of programs is streaming constantly on our Stop Radio network at stopradio.org and through iTunes, news talk radio stations, the TuneIn Radio app brings all that to your smartphone for free, by the way. And a special thank you goes out to our good friend Will Lajeunesse for keeping our Stop Radio station vibrant, relevant, and maybe most importantly, on the air. (laughs) He programs from our many hours of programming, so we always have a voice. You know, when psychoanalyst Dr. Claudia Bernhard Pacheco published her analysis of women's pathology, Women on the Couch, in 1987, she braced herself for a backlash. And by daring to take off the gloves and write about the levels of instability and hostility even that she was witnessing in the world of women, she took some heat. From women, of course, as expected, but from men, too, perhaps more surprisingly. These men who rose ferociously to defend their perfect mothers and lovers, who pampered and spoiled them and made them princes and kings, who wouldn't allow this game to be up, no, sir. These men were often far less willing than many women to accept what Dr. Pacheco was attempting to do, which was, as I understand it, to shed some light on the dysfunctional attitudes and behaviors of women in an attempt to bring more sanity to the women and their relationships. In Dr. Kepi's psychoanalysis, it's only by seeing the problem that we can really move beyond it and evolve. You know, I'm not sure this subject will receive a better hearing even today. It's still a pretty tender topic, but let's try with a lot of respect. Dr. Claudia Bernhard Pacheco and Women's Pathology, Big Sister is Watching when Thinking with Somebody Else's Head returns in just a moment on the Stop Radio Network. You're listening to the most relevant conversations on the planet about how to stop destroying ourselves and the world. This is the Stop Radio Network. I remember a client, she has an ear problem, the syndrome, when the person starts to get deaf. A landmark psychological science that helps us understand physical disease. But with analysis, the syndrome stopped developing. And helps solve it without drugs or surgery. So doctors told her, now you are a healthy person. Take back your normal life. Healing Through Consciousness by Claudia Bernhard Pacheco is a profound book loaded with case studies that explain the root cause of our health problems. And this morning, she woke up with a heavy heart, as if she was expecting something different from the doctor. And what we can do to really solve them, not just take away the symptoms. So the most difficult aspect is for her to even suspect that she has an inner life that she's not aware of. Claudia Bernhard Pacheco's Healing Through Consciousness, the revolutionary scientific method that treats both mental and physical illness through dialogue alone, making clinical treatment, medicines, and hospitalization unnecessary. Buy Healing Through Consciousness today in the bookstore at stop.org.br. The sickest people want others to be the way they idealize them. Norberto Kepi. Disinverting the human being and society. This is the Stop Radio Network. 
This is Thinking With Somebody Else's Head. Richard Lloyd-Jones here, and uh, it's a special day <laughs> because Claudia Baron harper was with us again. It has been some time since we've sat to record, and uh, our topic today, it's been even longer since you wrote the book. We're going to work with uh, women on the couch today. Uh, your, your book, you said in the introduction to this book, oh, hello, welcome, by the way. <laughs> Hello, Richard. I've, I've even forgotten how to do introductions to radio programs. We, we, uh, y- y- your book uh, is an attempt to focus on women's problems and difficulties in relation to herself, men, family, and society, and even the Creator. And you said in your foreword to this book that a study of the psychopathology of women was the most difficult undertaking you'd ever attempted. Yes. Why? <laughs> oh, <laughs> for so many reasons, but I'll try to quote a few. First, I'm a woman, so in order to understand more in depth the psychopathology of women, I must be uh, almost 100% honest. I don't say 100% because I will not be that megalomaniac. <laughs> to think that you could be 100% accurate, yes. I, I, but you know, as accurate it's as something, possible. It's something that requires such a an honest examination, inner examination, to be able to focus and be facing the truth about women, and mostly what is hidden under the water, as the iceberg is, that Freud mentioned, uh, what is already pushed behind our conscience, in our consciousness. Mm-hmm. Uh, things that we uh, learn to feel and to to live, but without admitting that is a problem. Sometimes even without acknowledging. This is one thing. Another thing is that women normally have been seen, and especially in in the last century, the, all the movements were to liberate women and seeing women as the weak part in 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 the relationships. The weaker sex, right? Is yes, a, uh, which is yes. a crazy sort of the weaker sex yeah. and victims and so fragile. They need uh, more protection than any other thing, and they should be more liberated to express their desires and their feelings and their inputs and the way they see life. So there is more. It's like politically incorrect to speak anything against women presently. So this is what I feel. So our pathology is totally at stake. Like, (laughs) at stake? No. uh... Solta. Ah, loose. Loose. (laughs) Free. (laughs) Running wild. Running wild. Exactly. Because in Dr. Kepi's science, it's seeing the problem that brings us the ability to control it a little bit. So what you're suggesting is if we don't see, if women don't see their problem, then it's free to operate with no restrictions. Yes. And what is this? You said a couple of things I want to focus on, which is the uh, the truth about women. What is the sort of principal truth about women you've discovered in your work with women that we don't know and we should know? Well, many people know that uh, women have many problems. They are jealous. They are envious. They are narcissistic. Uh, yeah, but men can be those things too, right? Men can be those things too. But we express these things um in different manners, mm-hmm. you know, we dif- we are different, Richard. Uh, it took a long time for me to admit we are really different. Yeah, men and women are really different. Well, I can tell you, all the men listening here are are are, are sort of on their knees, saying, "Please, Claudia, <laughs> help us to understand how uh, women think, what women are like." Because I don't uh, think we really understand that at all. Uh, we are different from men. Yeah. And and this is something that should be complementary. Yeah. It should be uh, something like a motor. Now, presently, they 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 have this commutation. Commutation. It's ca- action and counteraction. Action counteraction. So they don't cooperate. 
yeah, this is the, the, the biggest part of the story. If if men say something, women will say no, or will put an obstacle or put an energy against a defensive energy. And the other way round is we could we could say this is many times the same case as men. If we will open our mouths, then men will say immediately, "Shut up!" or yeah. "You you are speaking yeah. nuts." So yeah. this misunderstanding between men and women is so sad, because. Kep is a model of of uh, matter or or the atom, if we could name it. The it's the neutron and the the proton and neutron. The proton and neutron are the result. The proton and electron are the result of neutron. So there are three aspects. If we would compare this model with men and women and 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 our relationship, we could name the neutron as God, as the essential energy, as the life principle. Center point, right? Center point that feed our beings, men and women. And But if we would be like united, like for instance, women would be the electron, men would be the proton, and God the neutron, neutron giving energy to proton and electron. And then the, the proton and electron men and women would be uh, orienting to a common source and with a common goal. Yes. In some way. S and this does not happen. No, it doesn't. So what happens is that neutron was taken away. The essential energy, the Holy Spirit, if you can name it, or the, the divine. The spiritual base of our lives. Was, was taken away. Yeah, stripped away. So. Deliberately. Men and women, they behave like free radicals, looking and needing like small vampires needing a source of energy. And they don't take this from God anymore. They take from other things, secondary things. Or from each other. From each other. And so this vampirism is present in our everyday society. And so presently, I see that neither men understand women nor women understand men because we are too different and we want things like in like we go opposite directions most of the time we don't have a common goal because in your explanation now we've lost this central this is consolidating part this is a typically spiritual problem yeah, this is very deep spiritual problem deep spiritual yeah. problem yeah because we don't we don't resonate anymore yeah. in the same level of vibration. We have different scales of vibration. Women are more in the fields of intuition, emotion, feelings, and men are more in the field of intellect and reason and social action. Right? So we should be get together and resonate as it happens. It should happen in the brain. And our brain doesn't work like this any longer. So our right side and the left side of the brain are not together in resonance. So, so if we have uh, men more oriented to reason, uh, philosophy, I guess, and women more to emotion, yeah. love, beauty. But the pity is <laughs> this... This happened until up to the middle of the 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 twentieth century, I, I I suppose, or the beginning, when women started to teach their children, the boys, to be to be and to behave more like women, in the sense that uh, women mistakenly thought that men were too primitive, yep. too uh, aggressive, aggressive too primitive, too stupid sometimes, yeah. Yeah. that would not understand them. That a woman can understand another woman, but a man never understands a woman. But we don't think that. We don't understand men either. And our our boys, we teach them to be like girls. And we deform our boys. And, and how are boys being taught to be like girls in the sense of, uh, we hear all the time, 
You need to show your emotions. You need to yeah. talk about the problem. Don't be aggressive. Don't be this. Don't be that. Yeah. But some sort of impulse, like a proton has, the man must have, in even to defend his woman and his family and the planet. Yeah. So what we see presently, and I'm not a rightist. Yeah, no. poli- poli- <laughs> I'm not in the right yeah. side or I'm not, yeah. you know, against uh, this or that source of political thought. No, I, I'm, I'm speaking out of science. And what we see is that men become a, like a hybrid. Being. Hybrid. Hybrid. Yep. They cannot be what they are, and they cannot become women either. Because I'm not speaking about sexual things, because sexual things, they it's a, a result, it's a consequence f- from a psychological confusion that boys get when they are taught to be... M- more like women yeah. because they stay at home they um have their sisters and their mothers and their aunts and their grandmothers because they stay more at home and they deal more with children in schools are more frequently uh, directed or taught by women teachers that are women so what we see is that women want men to behave more like they are. And this is creating an imbalance in in society. I'm not saying that we should go back to the previous model. I'm saying we should go forward. Yeah, we we have to uh, um, evolve, uh, progress to some level, not... (laughs) Because we're seeing this now. There's some some recent research in England showing that boys are seriously underachieving at school, Mm. that uh, especially white working class boys, uh, interestingly enough, uh, in in, in every area, boys are struggling much more than girls. Girls are developing leaps and bounds in every area, in politics, in economics, in business, in family, in every area, freedoms, rights, all of those things, even in pay now. There's some reports I saw today that young women, 18 to 28, I think, are beginning to overcome boys in terms of salary even. So in every area, girls are developing. And so boys let me are... ask you something. <laughs> Is society better now than before? Well, in my opinion, n- not at all. It's so much worse. are we doing better in economy, in politics, in every in all areas than before. No, right? No, I don't think so. The the, the statistics show this. And even women are now in a in a situation where they want to be as free as men, sexually speaking. And they have this big problem now of abortion. Yeah. The in Brazil, one out of five um births are from, I don't know in English how to express this, uh-huh. one about five babies. One is a child of ad- an adolescent. Yeah. And if you pre, don't... Pre, pre-teen, I think. Yeah. Even teen, teenage, teenage pregnancies. So this is a huge social economic problem. Very, very high here. This is a huge emotional problem for women yeah. because they are not ready to be mothers. They have their lives spoiled. And if they abort the baby, those are those who did not abort. But those who do abort babies, they are even more harmed because a woman that uh, perform or, uh, like abort. Yeah, yeah, has an abortion. Has an abortion. A woman that has an abortion, she will never, ever be able to be in peace again because the nature of women is a nature of motherhood, of loving their children. It's a loving nature, nature. I'm speaking about nature, about essence. Yeah. So uh, women, they, they are, since they are very small, they, they take those dolls, dolls. and, and they, they, yeah. uh, they cherish the dolls and as if they were true, do- true babies. So this is it's part of our na- nature. It's instinctive. It's psychologically oriented for that. Uh, even lesbians are very fond of their adopted children. So 
to kill a son or a, like a child, uh, it's always a trauma. Even if they don't perceive at the moment, they will feel it later. And this, uh, is, I think this is totally true. And I think um, this nurturing element that you're talking about is being stripped out in the school systems we see in Sweden now, this movement to let the child choose his or her sex and not to orient him towards any toy or more than others. Well, let's take a little break, Claudia, and uh, we'll be back in just a minute on Thinking with Somebody Else's Head. Thank you for listening to the most relevant conversations in the world about stopping the destruction of ourselves and the planet. This is the Stop Radio Network. In a world where women have struggled to discover themselves and their true purpose, she started to reject herself, her essence. She started to see in herself, in her femininity, something inferior. Comes a book that frees them to be what they were destined to be. A woman is a link between man and God because of the intuitive and spiritual aspect and the feeling. Claudia Pacheco's Women on the Couch. An incisive analysis of women's psychology that lays out what's gone wrong. We have this big inversion inside of ourselves that lead us to think that being a woman is not good, is inferior. We don't want to serve. We don't want to be submissive to God, to beauty, to truth, to goodness. And how women can get back on track. But I understand that the only way for us to free ourselves is to serve, to be useful, and to grow. Claudia Pacheco's Women on the Couch, an analysis of female psychopathology. Available in the bookstore at HealingThroughConsciousness.com. Hi, my name is Thorne, and I love listening to the Stop Radio Network. It helps me to start off my day in a really good mode. The most relevant conversations in the world today are on the Stop Radio Network. We're back thinking with somebody else's head uh, on the Stop Radio Network. Richard Lloyd-Jones with you. It's been a while since we've done a program, and uh, I think both Claudia and I are feeling we're stretching our muscles again. (laughs) <laughs> and Claudia was just complaining about her English, which I think is marvelous. And I was complaining that I sometimes don't know even how to frame questions. So it's, uh, it's this is what happens when you don't do this for a while. It's like it's a it's um, a discipline like anything, you know. The discipline. I, I comes... get so uh, like uncomfortable when we have to speak about things like this abortion. Yeah. Homosexuality. It's very intense. It's so delicate. Yeah. Um, because this is politically an incorrect to deal with those things as problems. Yeah. And, but they are problems. And people who have these problems, they feel the problems. And this problem doesn't come from outside as they think and as psychologists claim or politicians claim. It's not society that is censoring the problem. Societies could even do this, okay. Yeah. But the worst part come, come from within. You said in a radio program that many times women see in men their own oppression, yes. aggression, lack yes. of respect, not yes. being taken yes. seriously. Yes. Yes. That this is what they do to themselves yes. that they blame men for. And men may yes. do that as well, of course. Yes, but. yes. But uh, we cannot <laughs> take away... The social and the external problems, like other people, but the main and and the nucleus of of everything comes from within. And in this sense, Kepi is really, really Socratic, Christian, Kepian, of course, uh, in his dialectics. Because Socrates already was was sentenced to death. Because he brought this concept, the true problems of society, they come from the arrogance of individuals, the corruption. So, people are so arrogant, so outside their minds, that they think they know everything. They are the owners of the truth, and they are not. So his principle was, first, know thyself. If you want to know anything, knowledge comes from knowing 
ourselves. And he went around the city conducting dialogues with people that eventually would lead the person to realize how their actions were inconsistent with their the- their their philosophy or their philosophy was inconsistent with their actions. There was some, it's like a, you can almost see it like a huge wakening up moment and the, and the person going after all these questions from Socrates going, oh my God, I've been thinking something completely wrong for my whole life. So <laughs> wisdom is based on the knowledge that we know nothing, that we know so little, yeah. or sometimes even nothing. Yeah. So this is the only thing we can know about ourselves. We know so little, and we pr- we are lo- like so pretentious uh, owners of the truth. Yeah. And this creates an enormous conflict. Um, so at that time, the powerful in society considered Socrates as a cor- a corruption, Corruptor a source. Of the youth, yeah. A co- yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he would come and say, "Look, you don't know what you think you know," and this was considered a corruption for society. Cicuta was the, <laughs> the the poison they they made him take. Hemlock. Hemlock was it? Uh, hmm? Was it hemlock? I don't remember the poison they made him Cicuta. take. Cicuta. I don't even know what that is in English. Cicuta. <laughs> I thought it was hemlock, but okay. okay. <laughs> okay Cicuta whatever it was. Portuguese. Some poison that he, yeah. And Jesus was the same thing. Yeah, yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ. And, and he came in, he, he, he showed the, the mask, the hypocrisy, the pretentiousness, the arrogance. And Some people didn't like that very much, did yeah. they? Yeah. So he stepped on their toes. Toes. The result was the same as Socrates, yeah. condemned to death. Yeah. So here we are, <laughs> <laughs> uh, struggling to survive with the science and showing that in psychological science, the principles are the same, are the same. And uh, when we speak about men and women, they are the owners of the truth in each side. So both of them are very mistaken. And lately, women have more adopted this attitude with the support of politicians and laws and philosophers. And the legal system. So this made women even more crazy because they became too arrogant, too apart from their true problems, inner problems. So my my perception is the way things were should not stay the way they were because women were, were so outside, so alienated from everything. And a big part of the problem was themselves. They did not take responsibility from anything. They just wanted to stay at home, playing with the children, speaking bad about her their husbands and and complaining about life and so this and spending money totally outside the notion of the need of their cooperation so this wasn't in your view an external imposition it was it was it was that too a obviously a combination because yeah. when they decided to get rid of that they did they are doing but they are doing for a wrong intention. So this is a pity because uh, uh, we see very little, um, very few women taking responsibility for what they do and for their lives. So, And most of the damage are done to their children. And they are creating men like hybrids. They are not men anymore. They are not women, so sometimes they they become homosexuals, and women become like uh, lesbians because this is not a sexual problem. This comes from the mind, this competition, this rivalry between men and women, the envy between them, and mostly lately feed by women. Are you suggesting that women are oppressing the masculinity of what? I'm stating this because I see clients. I see the way they deal with their children. So it's not a matter of letting children and boys uh, destroy things to prove their masculinity. Yeah, of course. But um, we must see that there is a drive in men different from women. Women are more uh, prone to 
inner inner lives like emotions, feelings, in, intuition, spirituality, and men have a difference. So why don't we accept men many times? I see women saying, "I uh, I don't like my husband, or I don't like this, I don't like his behavior, I don't like." Blah, blah, blah. So women understand women better than men. So we o only we can understand ourselves. The same things men say about women. So uh, we being different in in the way they were, we were um, we were created, we were developed, our instincts, our hormones, everything. It's different. Our bodies are different, and our, the purpose for ourselves is different. The problem is that being different, we do not accept. So we speak so much about accepting differences and, like, uh... yeah, we don't really. Very much. Can I can I use a, an example? It comes up in the classroom. It might just help us to put a finger on this, like in a more concrete way. Uh, a number of my women students say they absolutely hate it when their boyfriends or husbands watch football games on Sunday. It irritates them, and I say, so what's irritating about that? And they say, well, because he's wasting his time. And he should be doing something more important. And I think there's another factor there that I feel if a woman says that to me, why are you spending all your time watching the baseball game? For me, it's baseball, right? Baseball game, right? This would be envy, right? Well, I think it's yeah. because I'm happy doing that somehow. Yes, <laughs> yes. And women hate seeing men so happy because men many times are are like adolescent people. Simple. Simple yeah, and less, and they want to be happy. They want to be happy, <laughs> and women don't want to be happy. They want to live a drama, <laughs> so they are dramatic. Yeah. So, um, sometimes Freud said, "Women do not accept men. That's why they do not accept their fathers, uh, their husbands, and they are even envious at the penis of men." Uh. I would not say that. Yeah. He didn't understand exactly the envy of women because he was not a, wo a woman. So he thought we would appreciate what he liked the most in himself. Right? right. <laughs> but <laughs> To put it bluntly. Yeah. yeah he was but, pretty proud of it. Yes. Yeah. And he projected onto women this uh, thing with a penis. Yeah. But women really do not envy no. penis of men. Yeah. Uh, I can say that, and not only from myself, but from, I, 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 I'm a psychologist, I'm a psychoanalyst. I see women do not really no. envy the no. penis. Yeah. They envy other things, like the, the freedom to be happy that men want to have and have. So this enjoyment of life that women cannot have, they do not allow themselves to enjoy life. And they, they, they think that if they want to be happy, they should be free to do whatever men do in the wrong way of, of things. Yeah, do, do all the wrong things that men yes. do. Yes. So uh, they try to imitate what is wrong in men. Hmm. And we see this happening in big corporations. Like well, women, when they, when they direct men, they can be even nastier, more arrogant, more titanic yeah. than a man. You you saw the Michael Moore documentary where he went to Iceland. Yes, I, I did. Yeah, Some right. part of it. He, yes. Yeah, he went to Iceland and he, he his documentary, Where Should We Invade Next? He goes to many countries to steal their best ideas. And he, he went to Iceland to steal their idea of the superiority of women. When women don't work, nothing works, as they, they said there. And they, they actually had an example. When all the banks were crashing, one of the only banks that survived was a bank run by women. So there's this big idea that that women uh, think about what's good for the whole, men think only about themselves. If the world could be saved, it'll be women who do that. Women are looking for peace. They want to save humanity. There's a lot of this kind of mentality around that mm -hmm. I think is, I think in some cases that, that there's probably those elements that are true. But there must be something going on in women that they don't want to see, which is why you got such a reaction to your book. Yes. So I don't know about Iceland um, so society yeah. uh, that much. I don't know uh, to be able to give my uh, uh, 
like a more serious opinion on this. But what I see is that, of course, a society without women would never work ah, of course. as without men. So neither one nor the other. Yeah. So sh both of them should be complem complementary. Yeah, one complement the other one, cooperate. So where this can be done, or where this could be done, then we would see a true society flourishing. Because if we analyze this, the situation in Iceland, I, I guess it, it's too recent to evaluate the damage of putting men aside of decisions in society. But I guess they are not putting really men uh, no, outside, no, no. right? No, I think just there, there, there is a balance. Yeah, there's a big balance. There's at least 40% of women need to be on board of directors. It looks like it's a pretty reasonable uh -huh. system, actually, and they have a lot of women who are elected to government, and so uh -huh. they have this sort of mix of two things. The women probably feel that they are the reason that things are getting better. and uh, that Because, them... you see, women, they don't want to fight and have and, and 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 do like a war start a war a physical war themselves because they are they are afraid yeah. but society or history shows that women were behind the scenes most of the time pushing men to go to war not only to war but war in in families war in enterprises women create a situation and then they come and they say, "Come on, you are not going to defend myself, or are you not being able? Are you not uh, a man masculine enough to to take a move?" And they are most of the time in history, women are behind the man, and this is very, very unethical, because women they push, they cause intrigues, they cause they create um, difficult situations. They are uh, between those lensois. Come on, <laughs> between the sheets. <laughs> between the sheets, and and speaking like whispering on the yeah. ears of their men, and they can influence a lot. Yeah, and they do influence a lot, but they don't take responsibility for nothing. They don't take responsibility. So if they start a war. They would have to take responsibility and be courageous enough to do that. And they don't. Let's try to do another program next week. Let's try. Yeah. It's a pleasure yeah. for me to be here. It's very, very great. It's a, it's, this, this topic, you can feel as we wade into it, is so full of uh, political correctness and things you can't say. So I don't feel you're completely free to... Say some of the things yeah. you want to say. Yes, uh, I yes, feel that this yes. is the, the restrictions. Things of the... that are that I can say to my clients yeah. and to my inside my group therapies, but something I I must say is that um, men are beautiful because they are different, and the day women finish with their masculinity, the world will be so boring. So restrictive, and women will not be happier with that. On the opposite, they will be much sadder. Well, we feel men feel that in their bones because women will criticize them for being like men, and when they're not being like men, the women they're, despise them. <laughs> yes, so it's yeah, it's tough. This and and just something, women pay attention. If you do not accept a man because you do not understand him, you don't think the way they do think, you don't have the same reactions, please respect the differences and their reactions because their way of being, it's absolutely essential for our well-being. Even if we are envious and do not want to admit, this is the truth. Yeah, there's so much more to say about all this, isn't there? I certainly don't want to leave you with the impression that this kind of wraps it all up in a nice bow. Yeah, as with everything to do with human psychology, the truths lie deep, and digging them up doesn't always make total sense at first listen. We'll try to dig in again a little bit more next week. 
That's our program for this time. The program is Thinking with Somebody Else's Head. We are on the Stop Radio Network and very pleased to have you along. We'll try and continue again next week. Until next time, this is Richard Lloyd-Jones on Thinking with Somebody Else's Head. Bye-bye for now. Illness lies in our resistance to consciousness. Norberto Cappi. Disinverting the human being and society. This is the Stop Radio Network.